So we have two circuits now that compute a next address uh, through some means. Uh, we can also feed a totally different address into the uh, program counter register, which would implement a kind of absolute jump, uh, where the target address might come from a CPU register. So we need a way to select which one is actually used to update the PC to the next state. And for this, we need a multiplexer with uh, three inputs, one input for each of the options we have. Now, the closest we can get is this uh, 74HC153 chip, which is a four input multiplexer. We can just leave the fourth input unconnected. Maybe we'll find a use for that later on. Now, each chip has uh, two four-way multiplexers. So we need a total of four chips to implement our 8-bit uh, four-way multiplexer. So let me add this to the board. There we go. Let me hook up uh, power and ground immediately. Now, these multiplexers, they have separate uh, enable inputs. This is the G here, uh, which we want to connect together because we want to have both uh, multiplexers enabled at the same time. Um, but also these A and B inputs, which are essentially selecting which ones of the inputs uh, is actually being fed through to the output. And since we have four of the chips uh, and we want them to all behave uh, the same way, uh, we have to connect all the A, B and G inputs uh, together of all the chips. So let me do that. First, the enable inputs uh, for the two multiplexers in each chip. There we go. So if we enable one of the multiplexers of the chip, the other one is enabled at the same time. Now let's connect the G inputs of each of the chips together into basically one single control line for the entire multiplexer. All right, that's all of the uh, enable lines of the multiplexers connected. Now let's hook up the A and B inputs, which is basically the selector uh, signal of all the chips.
Uh, for the time being, let me actually pull load this um, enable signal of, uh, of the entire multiplexer. Uh, this is an active load signal uh, on the MUX, so if we pull that low, um, these are just going to operate as regular MUXs. And if we were to pull that signal high, uh, all the MUXs would just output a constant zero. Now, these select lines, um, these will have to be driven from somewhere outside of this uh, breadboard of this uh, program counter. Um, these might come from an instruction decoder or some other part of the CPU pipeline. Uh, so what I would like to do is actually bring those over here um, where we have easier access to them and we can use a, like a very small DuPont cable to connect off the board. So let me add two LEDs here, um, which are connected to the select signals. So we can basically judge what the program counter is doing by looking at it. Let me also uh, connect the select inputs to uh, zero at the moment, which will select the first of the inputs of the multiplexer. Also, while we're at it, uh, we might want to visualize the clock enable signal of the uh, register as well to see when the program counter is actually enabled and uh, wants to update. So instead of directly connecting this uh, step address uh, counter over here to the input of the register, uh, let's actually connect the output of the multiplexers to those register inputs. All right, so that's the multiplexer outputs connected over to the uh, input of the PC register. Now let me bring that next uh, instruction address back up um, and connect it to input zero of the multiplexer, such that when we select a zero here, we're basically selecting the next instruction address, which is just one step uh, down the program. All right, let's do the same thing for the relative jump address over here and bring that up to input one of the multiplexer, such that when we select a one here, uh, we're selecting the relative jump.
All right, there we go. A bit messy, but the connections uh, should be there. Now as the uh, input number two, uh, which gets selected when we uh, put the two on these wires, uh, we want to be able to make uh, an absolute chump, which is basically a destination address provided from somewhere outside of this board, um, like a register in the CPU that is dictating uh, what address we want to chump to. Um, so to do that, let me actually, because this is kind of messy here doing the connections, uh, let me bring out the connections to input uh, number two uh, to a location where it's easier to work with them. Perfect. Uh, let me connect the absolute address up to some interesting pattern that we, is going to be easy to recognize. There we go. So let's give this a test and see if all the modes we have actually do work. So right now we have uh, multiplexer input zero selected, which is the uh, step address counter here, which computes the next instructions address. So if I hit the step button, um, this should just be counting up in single byte increments. Nice, that seems to be working. And we can adjust the step size. This should be a step size of two. And sure enough, this is counting by two. Now, if we change this over to uh, a one, we should be selecting the relative jump mode. Um, now to keep in mind that these are actually backwards. So this here is the least significant bit. So that's a one, that's uh, input one of the multiplexer selected. So currently programmed here, let me uh, program this to all ones, which is uh, two's complement for one step backwards. So the relative chump at the moment is just gonna chump one byte backwards. And sure enough, we are stepping backwards. Now, if we select input two, uh, we are actually selecting the absolute chump input, which is basically just copying whatever's on this absolute chump address wire into the PC. So let's see if that works. And sure enough, that's exactly the pattern I programmed. And hitting the step button is just gonna copy the same address over and over into the PC, so nothing happens. But say we've jumped here with the program, if I now select zero again, which is the regular stepping mode, we can actually just continue stepping through instructions for starting at that address. Now, one of the features of the multiplexer is that they have this uh, enable signal, which is currently tied low, uh, which is uh, because it's active flow, uh, enables the multiplexers. But if we tie that high, their outputs change to all zeros. So regardless of what we've selected here, we should be able to just hit the step button and this should clear back to zero. And it sure does. And when we pull it back low again, it will just continue normal operation. So with these multiplexers in place, we can not only do absolute jumps, uh, but also select the mode in which the program counter should operate. In the next episode, I would like to spend some time thinking about how we can reset this program counter such that we always start executing a program from the top. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this and see you next time.